Greetings, I'm Noah, and this is a custom CMF draft. A very special one, in fact, because for one, I have been through puberty. And two, today, November 11th, marks three years to the day since my very first YouTube video on this channel, the Doctor Who CMF series. That is a pretty big milestone, if I do say so myself. I would never call myself a big YouTuber, or even a particularly good one, but I've loved slowly but surely growing Noah R, and learning everything I have about creating good content. This custom CMF draft is a sort of anniversary, patting myself on the back for three years under the belt. I'll massage my own ego, thank you very much. Featured are updated versions of characters from every series I made in that first year, from November 2018 to November 2019. In order, that goes... <gasps> Doctor Who, Clone Wars, Gravity Falls, Young Justice, Ruby, Spider-Verse, Marvel, Overwatch, Endgame, Far From Home, Video Games, Spider-Man, How to Train Your Dragon, Lord of the Rings, and Zelda. And a couple of surprises here and there. I won't drag this intro out any longer than it needs to go. If you've been here from the start, or just tuning in right now, please, sit back, relax, and enjoy this trip down memory lane. Trip you up already, didn't I? It might surprise you to learn that the first CMF series I made, even before Doctor Who, was based on the little-known Origami Yoda series, of which I was and still am a fan of. They look dumb at first glance, but they're much better than you might expect. Dwight Tharp is the main character and wielder of Origami Yoda himself. He was the first one I've updated of this group. For those who have read the series, you'll recognize his windy shirt and, of course, the little Origami Yoda puppet. If you want to see a full video coverage of this antique of my pre-YouTube days, let me know. That would be pretty... stooky. I feel like I have more of a connection with the LEGO 13th than the actual character. That's not meant to be a dig, I think. I just mean that there's a lot of nostalgia connected to this minifigure. The Doctor Who video is what truly started me on my weird, just insane hobby. And I have this character to thank. As for the update, and with pretty much every update here, you'll notice much cleaner lines, and in my opinion, better part choices. I was obsessed with making new hair pieces back in the day, even when it made no sense. With a new sonic screwdriver, of course, and shading. It really surprised me that Commander Cody was the only Star Wars character in this video. And I would have bet money that we'd have had an official version since I last drew him. Lost money, there. Since that drawing, we've had the 501st Battle Pack with the far superior Phase 2 printing scheme, which I emulated. There's battle scuffs and a blaster and Palpatine's hologram. Even though I know it's not in the Clone Wars, it's just that iconic. 2019's stand looks like something the actual Grunkle stand would hold hostage and use as an exhibit. That nose, those ears. Thankfully, he no longer looks like a rejected Muppet, but he still has a nose but just one of the special aesthetic ones, like the Underminer, or Steve Martin and Roxanne. If your nose is ever simply there for aesthetics, call a doctor. And of course, he has a fez, because fezes are cool. Kid Flash is such a treat in Young Justice 1, and that is because the Flash family is the best part of any DC story ever. Don't try to fight me, it's true. There was a great tragedy moving from 2019 to 2021. Wally lost his popcorn bucket so he can no longer drown his sorrows in food. Sometimes we suffer for our art. In repayment, he does have a better shaped hair and mask piece, but, you know, it's just not the same. Another trip to the system is that I drew the Spider-Verse series in October 2018, just after the second trailer released, and yet I didn't post it until February. Why? I was lazy. Updated Miles shares a lot of features with the mech Miles from the beginning of the year, like the hood and the big person legs, but with accurate designs and colors to the movie itself. And he's got a web to swing through Midtown and web those bad guys down. Peel, this one's for you. Ruby is just one of those things I've grown out of, but I still appreciate the insanely cool character designs. It was great taking another swing at Ruby Rose after all these years. The biggest change? The absolutely massive Crescent Rose, of course. And credit where credit is due, Casper Cat on my Discord was a huge help when it came to designing this thing. 
Definitely a weapon befitting a Huntress. And definitively, Wanda Maximoff is my favorite Avenger. She wasn't when I drew the comic version, which is clear. To create a new version befitting of the title Scarlet Witch, I decided to take the official headdress from the CMF figure, which I personally think works even better on this iteration. Now I just gotta find a design for Inth first Wanda that I really like. And that is much harder than it sounds. I'll say as little as possible about Overwatch's current state of affairs, because, well, it's like hearing, It's high noon. With no defenses, and sometimes you just gotta take the bullet. Let's instead think about the good times when Genjis could destroy you with three hits without a hint of remorse. Stay in character, guys. This Genji is based on his carbon fiber skin, which is very cool. I chose Genji to be the rep because he is the character with my favorite story, and of course not at all because his would be an easy palette swap. No siree. It is difficult to tell anything about old Nightwing, simply because the detail is much too dark. Just black blobs shoved together. Makes his job as a covert operative pretty easy, I'll admit, but not so much as an art piece. New Nightwing fixes this problem by being a brighter influence on the city of Gotham or Bloodhaven or any of the child soldiers he sends out to fight horrific battles. What can be said about Endgame that hasn't been said already? An incredible ending all around and an insane ascension for Tony Stark. Sorry I drew what amounts to his corpse. One thing you've probably noticed about the updates so far is that they're all in poses and not just statically standing around. Tony is one of the characters that benefits the most from this. Because, you know, you need to remake the pose somehow. He also features a much more accurate nano gauntlet and circuitry patterns because in my defense I was working off bad leaks from YouTube. Now with full HD glory you can see the exact moment he says, I. Am. Iron Man. Since Far From Home came out, the general consensus on the film has always surprised me. Why the heck is it considered bad? I love it. And in no small part due to Quentin Beck who is Mysterio, and I'm the biggest Mysterio fan there is. Beck was one of the most interesting figures, and in an admittedly uninteresting group. And he's my favorite villain, so of course he'd be remade. No longer working off of preliminary footage, Beck is much more suited to destroy London. I hated drawing that pattern, it killed my wrist. Who could have expected my Sonic character arc? Truly one of the greatest plot twists of the entire channel. And if I had not seen the Sonic movie, he would not have been the rep for this series. I don't know who it would have been otherwise. Probably Mario. That makes sense. In the Sonic series, I promised I would at some point redo Super Sonic. So I did. He's obviously very, very simple. And yet, someone please make a power scale of every character in this video. Spider-Man 2099 is a character I just really like for some reason. And that swanky white suit, perfection. Definitely had to revamp that and I'll address the elephant in the room. He no longer has the white web cape. Why? Because he doesn't wear a cape like that in the actual comics, he just has more like fins under the arms that only show up at some points, meaning I drew it for no reason back in the day. Ah, oh, well, he doesn't need to accessorize. You ever latch onto a character and have no idea why? Neo is just kinda cool. Like ice cream. I like ice cream. I probably have the least to say about her because I don't have a clue what she's been up to. Is she still a criminal? Did she turn her life around and start an ice cream truck? I like ice cream. I might know if I actually watch the next couple volumes, but ignorance is bliss. Like ice cream. Her eyes are on the right side this time. Thank you very much. Have I mentioned that I like How to Turn Your Dragon? Yes, I have. Old Hiccup suffers from the Nightwing Syndrome of black details and a black background that completely disappears. Now, the new hiccup just pops, because you can see everything going on in his armor. I will be completely honest, this one made me tear up a bit drawing it. Hiccup means a lot to me as a character, and I'm so glad to have finally done him justice. This one nearly killed me. Sauron, the enemy of the free peoples of Middle-earth, has no style, nor he has no grace. Why wear such finicky armor, huh? Insecurity much? I think the shading really shows through now, especially since his armor is supposed to be shiny and not just flat like that. This guy took at least three hours to draw and I hated every second of it. Link was, in many ways, the start of a new era for me. The gaming era, I suppose. Zelda was the first Nintendo franchise I really dove into, it's still my favorite. And now I'm into a lot of other games as well. 
I can now recognize everybody I drew in the gaming video. I'm still not good at any of them, but my Min Min and Ultimate can wreck shop, I swear. And as the newest of the group, I still really like how the old one looks. New one is an improvement, of course, with shinier sword and shield, but I'm a fan of the classics. You want to talk about a nostalgia trip? This was an incredible experience for me. I'll be completely honest. The past few months have been rough in real life. And yet, looking back, meeting all of my favorite characters here again, it's helped. Remembering their stories, how each of them has had to fight for what they believed in, has boosted my spirits. And yes, even Sauron had to fight to take back what was his from those filthy hobbits. I've been jokingly calling them the Noah Avengers since I started this project. But that name might be a little more fitting than I intended. Could it be sappy? Sure. Could I be far too connected to a bunch of Lego drawings? Sure. But that all depends on perspective. And from my perspective, they all look pretty darn good. Thank you all. To new and old, thanks for watching my videos all through the years and enabling my obsessive compulsions. I think it's hilarious how much this channel has made me draw. I don't plan on stopping, but I do plan on stopping the CMF videos for a while. If this isn't a good place to take a hiatus, I don't know what is. But there are other projects I would like to try out, continuing the minifigure drawing train. So fear not, faithful viewer. This YouTube channel will now be exactly what I've wanted it to be since the start. My place to post whatever I want, whenever I want. I appreciate your bearing with me. If you want to see more of the minifigure stuff, my Discord and Instagram are the places to be. And in Discord specifically, you can share your own art. I really encourage you all to try your own CMFs, try your own videos. I would love to see your own versions of some of these lovely characters as well. Make stories for them. Decide why they are here. Decide what they mean. Create your own universes. You got this. So, to reiterate, thank you. It's been a ride. So until next time, later.